From a young age, I would walk, making sure to stare down at my feet. Eye contact opens the door to talk, and I prefer to stay discreet. I couldn't open my mouth to speak. The words would stick like glue. My mouth would melt in on itself, making it so hard to even breathe. Count to ten, deep breaths, palms sweating, heart racing, left foot, right, repeat, and head, and walk. To get called on in class was a nightmare of its own. Face red, blood rushing like it had been held by a dam that broke. I learned to not raise my hand. I'd know the answer, but not let it show. I knew if I tried to speak, I'd break. Eyes watching me, I'd mess up. I would just choke. Friends go out to the beach or the mall. Those places were definitely not made for me. Panic attack strikes. There's too many people. What if I trip, stumble, or fall? No, thank you. I sat in my room, made excuses not to go out. I want to be able to walk down the street and not freak out. I want to not freeze up when I hear someone shout, but once they get started and upset and angry, I become a statue and words are non-existence to me. It's a vicious loop and in that moment I want to curl up in my own body like a black hole and just disappear. When I started to grow, my mother would make me call and make my own appointments. I would freak out inside and ask her to make the call for me. You can do it yourself, you're a big girl now, she'd say. My father was not one to understand my struggle to do things by myself. I used to hear him whisper through the walls, speaking to my mother, telling her he doesn't understand how I can be so odd, how there is absolutely no reason for me to have these feelings, that something is wrong with me for not being able to walk uptown alone. So I'd ask my mother what I should say and rerun it a million times in my head. I'd write it out on paper. I would come up with questions they may ask so I had an answer prepared. After about an hour or two, I would pick up the phone. I'd plead with her one last time to do so, but she would nod her head no, and I was left. Dial the number. As hitting the talk button approached, my heart would stop, I would hang up the phone and take a few breaths, sit in my room and run over what I would say more. As I repeated the words, they sounded less and less like words and more like verbal noise that made no sense. I would get nervous to mispronounce something or stutter. I'd go over the words like they were a delicate procedure and I was the one that held the patient's life in my hands. I've lived my life following people, relying on people to make their choices first so I can agree with them and select the same items as them. When I go into a store, if I can't find what I'm looking for, I can't ask for help, I'm forced to leave. These thoughts in my head are constant, like railroad tracks in all directions, trying the hardest not to collide. I feel like a burden to people sometimes because I can never make up my mind and at times I have no voice. I'm used to people getting angry because of my social anxiety. I'm used to them just giving up. But there's this boy. He doesn't rush me on my answers. He tells me it doesn't annoy him when I'm anxious and I can ramble about most random things. He doesn't mind my thought process jumping randomly from one side of space to the next. We went to dinner and that was a big step for me. I was freaking out inside like a world war was going on and I was in direct line of fire. Palms sweating, fidgeting, face red, words taken away from me yet again. He didn't get angry, he didn't even get frustrated. He held my hand and looked me in the eyes, calming me from inside out. But anxiety won't let me rest in peace, leaving me with thoughts that soon he will give up like the rest and leave. It's not fair because this isn't something I can just cure. I can't take pills and make it all disappear, keeping me up late at night with arguments that are one-sided and throwing me into battle with myself, no sword or shield in hand.